Hello and welcome to Next Day Solar. In this episode we'll show you how we use the power of the sun to heat this greenhouse. Now it's a really simple setup and it's quite a clever setup using some of the best Victron equipment available. So now it's always been an ambition of mine to grow things in the garden. I do have a small vegetable patch uh, but it's not been very useful. Um, can't really grow things inside. Um, I've got some avocados going on over here which are doing pretty nicely um, as you can see. Um, but one of the key things about growing is warmth and sunlight and I was really interested to see if I could use the power of the sun to uh, generate heat to help plants grow and I think that's that sort of full circle connection with uh, nature uh, and food which we've kind of lost a lot of touch of. Now typically you might heat a greenhouse with perhaps a fire or some electric system. We've built a sustainable system here so very simply solar charge controller it's going to take power from the sun and we've wired up some carbon heat pads. Now these are available very inexpensively on eBay. They draw about 15 to 20 watts each, maximum 12 volt as well. And I've got four of these, lay them on the shelves, place some waterproof topping on top of them, and it's gonna work really well. So keep an eye, and we'll show you how we do. I've just wrapped my first uh, heat pad. Now obviously the heat pads are very sensitive to water, we don't wanna get them wet. So that's a wrap one, that's an unwrap one. I'm gonna wrap them all. Now I've very simply taken actually some loft insulation. It's actually natural sheep's wool. Uh, and wrap that around the shelves of the greenhouse. And that's to ensure that the heat doesn't go downwards. I want all the heat to travel up uh, to the plant. Now it would have a really nice impact on um, all the different plants. Um, still allowing light to pass through, but giving that essential heat at this time of year. Now so let's give you a really quick rundown of what we've got here. Servo GX, brains of all Victron systems. Solar charge controller to take power from the solar panel we've got outside. Uh, my DC bus, and this is basically a distribution board for the heat units, for the carbon heat units I've got. I've also got a Bluetooth smart charger up here, and that takes AC power uh, from the house uh, to top up. Now I just used a battery here, I actually had another battery there, that one wasn't very good, they were just old batteries that we had uh, lying around and you can use those kind of batteries and um, this one was a bit dead but this one seems to be holding its charge better it's roughly a kilowatt it's a lead battery so you've got about half a kilowatt uh, of usable capacity okay so what else have i got going on here i've got a v direct cable coming from the solar charge controller that's important to tell the servo what's going on now because we're outside the signal was pretty weak actually so i invested in one of these and um, victoron do talk about it. it's a netgear device uh, specifically i'll put the link in the uh, bio but that helped me get a proper wi-fi uh, connection out here and you can see um, in the servo uh, gx when you go into your settings uh, and you go into your wi-fi uh, it will actually tell you how strong uh, the connection is um, to the network. So here we're 50%. And before I put the antenna on, um, the existing Wi-Fi uh, device uh, in the Servo GX wasn't strong enough to get uh, network power. So that's just a quick, quick note about that. I've got this little Bluetooth chip here. Again, I'll put the note and link in there. Victron do talk about it. And that's to ensure that the Ruby devices, these temperature sensors, they last about a year, um, will continue to communicate. So it's really easy to connect to. You can see the status on your phone using not only the Victron app, but also uh, the Ruby app. You've got the Ruby station here, and we can tell uh, the temperature ambient, which I've left inside. And then you're starting to see that one cool down in the greenhouse. The reason why I've got these sensors in is because we've used the relays on the Servo GX. And if you've not used the relays before, and they're, they're at the bottom uh, here. Now we're using the relays for two different things. So the first relay uh, that we're using, and I'll just show you in settings here. So we're going to settings, we'll scroll down to relay. Yeah. Now there are two relays. Now the first one I've got generator start stop and I'll share that in a moment. The second one is the temperature one. Now you can change how you want to use it. So it could be a manual relay or temperature control. If I go into my rules of temperature control, I've picked greenhouse, so that's the temperature sensor. That's the Ruby temperature sensor that I've just named greenhouse up here. I mean, it talks about the conditions. Now it's currently on and I can feel the heat coming from the pad, which is great. And what it's basically saying is, turn on at zero degrees and turn off when it gets warmer than 18 degrees. I can set a second condition and I'll need to in the summer, but I'll talk about it in another video. So very simply, I can turn it on and off if I want to, but critically, it will activate at zero degrees. So when it's more than zero degrees, it turns on. And it will, when it's more than 18 degrees, it will deactivate. So very simple. And in that way now, with the ambient temperature being at 10, 11, 12 degrees, it ensures that the heating system stays on. Okay, now let's talk about the second relay. Now. I've got a charger down here, and that's to ensure that even if the solar panel doesn't give enough power, and the solar panel's there, it's a 90 watt Victron unit, just in a simple base in the garden. Um, I could put more panels if I wanted to on the deck, but might get 
into a bit of trouble. So that's to ensure that if there isn't enough power in the battery, and obviously I want to maintain the heating system the whole time, but the system stays on. So if I go into my function one, again, I've turned that to generator start stop. Now, if we go into the generator settings, which are up here, I'll show you some of the conditions. Now you can see the state now is running by battery voltage. And that means that the relay is active, the contacts are joined, and it's been running and it's been running for about half an hour now now if we go in there's lots of different things you can do here and if you go into conditions you can set lots of different conditions for how you want the system to work and this is essentially telling it how you want the relay to function now i've told it that when the battery voltage goes below 11.9 volts 12 volts turn on so when the battery is getting a bit empty turn on and when the battery is more uh, 13 volts turn off effectively. I'm not using quiet hours, I don't need to worry about too much. There were lots of other options that I could have used, and if I had some more uh, Victron equipment plugged in, like a shunt for state of charge, I could have used that as well. But in this simple one, what I'm essentially saying with the two different relays is keep my heat pads on until it's 18 degrees, which is exactly what I want, and then also turn on the battery charger when the battery's getting low. And that allows me to prioritize solar. So solar will be used when it can to top up the battery the whole time, but when battery's getting low, keep that charger in. Now I could have left that charger on the whole time, but that would be pushing unnecessary current to the heat pads and it wouldn't be the best way of dealing with things. So in that way there, but there's two relays and it breaks. So that's a quick overview. I've got five of the carbon heat pads uh, set up, one, two, three, four, five, and they're doing a great job and I've got loads of opportunity to expand it if I need to. I know it's not the best and most tidy wiring in the world, but it does the job uh, very simply. And often I wire for speed so I can get on with other projects uh, and learn new things rather than perfect and make sure it's absolutely perfect. Now, in the greenhouse, we're growing some mango trees, lemon trees, got another mango there, got some avocado trees, that's not looking so good. But I really hope through the use of all these heat pads and then all that insulates his wall, which you can see here, we should get a better result, certainly uh, in the earlier part of the year. Come summer, I may decide to turn the device into a cooling system to actually ventilate the greenhouse as I need to. But if you're looking for a very sort of simple uh, and cost-effective way of heating and keeping your plants warm, and it's really warm to the touch, you put your hand there and straight away you can feel it, and they're very low watt. Each of these heat pads that I'm running, uh, they're, they're 12 volt, available on eBay, very basic places, uh, and they draw about 15 to 20 watts. So that's a quick overview. That's the greenhouse power system. Um, the Serbo GX is online the whole time. So if you wanted to have a look at the system, there's a link below. You can see how the system's working and see when the relays are on or off and then monitor it throughout the summer. Um, I've got the screen up here. It's a nice to have, it's not necessary, but it allows me to walk into the greenhouse and know, okay, greenhouse is two degrees. So I know the heating system's working and the actual greenhouse is working itself. I can see what my solar charge controller is doing. PV's at 14 volts, so it's higher than battery, which is good. And uh, it just gives me a quick overview and that will go off after for a minute to save energy as well. Well, currently using a thermal imaging camera, uh, you can see it's very, very cold outdoors at the moment, just to see where the heat pads and how effective they are at working. And here I can identify it's actually only two lines of heat coming from these heat pads. You can really feel it here and um, when you place your hand Daddy, over it there. We the just check some of the other heat pads. You can definitely see lots of heat coming from that one there, come down. And you can actually see that one's working quite well. Bit of a gap in the middle, perhaps where there's been a break in the heat and then you can certainly feel the heat there and certainly feel the heat there. So it's quite helpful just to sort of verify how well the heat pads are doing and how well they're working um, in this scenario. They are quite inexpensive and you can see that relatively inexpensive. You don't get the greatest of quality. Just having a look at these heat pad here, working nicely here. And there's actually no heat coming at all from that, that side. And then lastly, we've got a heat pad here and again, similar sort of story, very patchy in terms of where the heat's coming from. Two kind of heat elements there working quite nicely, whereas the rest, and you can feel, you can feel that here, no heat at all, and then a little bit of heat uh, on the end there. So I suppose from that, I know that the heat pads are working. You can see the heat, but not working as well as they need to, and the heat's not consistent. So I might look for a slightly more improved um, method, especially this one here, it's quite disappointing really. And if I look at some of the solar equipment, you can see that some of the systems themselves are generating a little bit of heat with the rest of the greenhouse. It's really quite cold. And if we have a look underneath, we're seeing we're retaining some of that heat from underneath, which is why we use those uh, sheepskin blankets. But um, the heat's definitely permeating up through the soil. 
you can see that uh, here uh, on the coloration of the plant pot. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was just another sort of fun way of using Victron technology to try and use energy in the most efficient way, but also kind of connect that energy to food, which is a really important part of, uh, of sustainability. Um, lots of energy is used in the production of food, so I just kind of wanted to try and use the power of the sun as much as I could um, to, uh, to, to help uh, in energy production. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.